This is EHA Today at the uh, European Society of Cardiology Annual Congress in London 2015. I'm Tom Lusher, Editor-in-Chief of the European Heart Journal, and I'm talking to uh, Dr. Rieger and Professor Mosberg from the uh, Ludwig Maximilian University and uh, the Grossharden Hospital in Munich, Germany. Welcome. Thank you. So, Dr. Rieger, the uh, Prestige Consortium uh, is, of course, a multi-center uh, consortium, as the name indicates, uh, but what's the background of it? How, what made you start this uh, project? This Prestige project was started to um, get to know more about the mechanisms uh, leading to stent thrombosis and uh, to um, design strategies to prevent stent thrombosis. And um, our uh, sub uh, analysis of the thrombus samples um, was to find out more about the uh, cellular and uh, mechanisms leading to stent thrombosis. So what's the organization of the consortium, Professor Mosberg? Actually, <coughs> the, the application went back to 2010 where we applied for funding by the um, uh, European Framework Package uh, 7 and we were fortunately successful together with uh, 14 partners across Europe. And uh, um, so we started in December 2010 and enrolled now almost uh, 600 patients into the whole uh, study, um, the clinical part of the study. And one should maybe mention that uh, along with the clinical study um, part, we also have a basic research to sort of um, um, account also for the um, uh, 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 analysis of the uh, more molecular cellular mechanisms in, in animal models, for example. So what do you present now today? is basically the uh, more mechanistic part of, of yeah. the program. Yeah, it's actually it's a part of the clinical um, study that we uh, performed um, and we will present today the uh, data of the thrombus registry where we analyze the thrombi from patients uh, that succumbed or that, that, uh, that um, uh, experienced stent thrombosis and underwent uh, thrombus aspiration. And that's what Dr. Rieger is gonna present this afternoon. So what were your findings? We focused on um, different targets and not surprisingly we, fo uh, we found many platelets and the coagulation system by fibrinogen involved in uh, sure. thrombus, mm -hmm. um, thrombus formation. But um, interestingly we found also many inflammatory cells like leukocytes and their subsets, neutrophils and eosinophils and stuff. And um, we could uh, found also neutrophil extracellular traps. These are um, involved in arterial thrombosis by several mechanisms um, connected to the um, fibrin formation and platelet recruitment and um, we could detect these cells in many uh, many numbers in these thrombi. We uh, did actually a similar study in STEMIs in 2005. We published this in circulation uh, with Dr. Meyer also, um, somebody from Munich, uh, as it happens. and. Uh, we also found lots of uh, different cells, monocytes, granulocytes, and eosinophils. So my question is, how does uh, stent thrombosis and the composition of the thrombus differ uh, to what we, ex what we see when patients have a normal STEMI after plaque rupture? What we saw, um, we had almost 100 thrombi from spontaneous myocardial infarctions and compared to the stent thrombi we found statistically significant more leukocytes in uh, thrombi from uh, patients suffering a stent thrombosis. Mm -hmm. It might be an indication for the more important role of inflammation in stent thrombosis than in spontaneous myocardial infarctions. Did you also measure plasma markers? Uh uh, in these patients, inflammatory molecules uh, that might be... We took blood samples. Uh, so that was actually not part of the um, uh, analysis because due to the budget also we had to, to yeah. restrict our um, parameters somehow. And uh, the other problem is that it's, it's a global European approach. So we have uh, 15 countries uh, all over um, Europe involving uh, or recruiting patients uh, to that study. And we um, had to come up with parameters that um, were we, we were able to, to analyze in a core laboratory and that's why we focused on the thrombus histology, but uh, you're right. Did you also do uh, some staining for genes and gene products that are expressed in these cells? We all only focused at the moment at the inflammatory cells, but didn't um, yes. stain for genes. So you have more inflammation in stent thrombosis. Do you think this is coming from a local stimulus or is it uh, that the inflammatory uh, reactions of the entire body 
infection or whatever uh, happens to occur uh, is a trigger for stent thrombosis? We, we think that's more the local processes mm -hmm. that make this difference. So um, a, a large number of patients involved in the registry had late stent thrombosis, actually two-thirds of the patients, and we think that in these patients um, uh, de delayed um, um, healing with uh, in, in chronic inflammation plays a very important role. Also eventually neoatherosclerosis could be a trigger of thrombosis formation in these patients and this as we know is a rapid inflammatory process. So two-thirds actually had late uh, stent thrombosis. Uh, that, uh, how did, did you find that? <coughs> what time uh, time uh, window did you take? So we used the ARC uh, criteria. So we uh, we discriminated the patients into um, early and late, um, uh, before and after 30 days, yes. and then we also did subclassification into acute, subacute, um, late and very late stent thrombosis. Yes. And how was the distribution? That's a very interesting finding. Yeah. So you mean uh, the distribution regarding the um, when it occurred? So um, I mean the. Two thirds very late, you said. Yeah, and so we had, uh, I think, f uh, 20 patients with very late stent thrombosis. So it was a small proportion of yeah. the patients, actually. So the majority occurs at one time point, roughly, in yeah. terms of uh, months. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 uh, it's within the the period of six to 12 months, at least That's an hour to re register. Was the majority? Yeah. And was this in any ways? Uh, uh, pros it was prospectively planned, was it? And was it, uh, did they pick up all patients? Uh, was this assured or what? No, that, that's the issue. I mean, we cannot really tell uh, anything about the distribution, overall distribution of, of uh, stentum by, and it's very hard to tell whether um, the frequency is representative. Yes. Uh, we only get the thrombi that we, uh, from the patients that we see in one of these hospitals. Right. So it's, we should not uh, interpret the findings um, um, in a direction um, that they uh, allow us to draw conclusions on the frequencies of stent thrombosis in, in, uh, with respect to timing. That's difficult. So if it's chronic inflammation, <coughs> um, the stent used uh, may uh, have a quite an impact uh, on, uh, on the process because uh, they're newer stents and uh, the design and, uh, um, differs in, in many ways. Uh, did you look at this aspect as well? Yes, we did, um, had um, divided our thrombus aspirates to bare metal stents and the drug eluting stents from first and second generation. Um, mm -hmm. But and we found numerous comparable numbers of leukocytes. Mm -hmm. And our uh, f thought is that the thrombus that we aspirated is kind of a, uh, reflects the, a common. Uh, s um, final pathway of thrombus formation, mm -hmm. regardless the initial triggers, yeah. because we can only find have a look on the thrombus aspirates, yes. and there we found uh, similar amounts of all s leukocytes, neutrophils, and eosinophils coming from all the aspirates, from bare metal and from drug eluting so stents. And also, first and second generation didn't differ. Not. No, I mean there was was a trend towards higher numbers of inflammatory cells in the um, uh, uh, in the very late stent thrombosis mm -hmm. patients. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but um, I mean still we are, we are dealing with 253 patients, uh, which is a lot uh, on the one hand side, but on the other hand side for statistics, it's still a limited number of patients. What's interesting is the finding of eosinophils, and uh, so this uh, points towards some sort of an allergic reaction. Huh? Is that a conclusion you make? Um, there m might be a hint that um, that allergic uh, reaction is involved in the in the thrombus formation, but as Professor Masbeck said, we d we didn't have um, statistically significant numbers in. Right. Uh, but we th think about that uh, they contribute to thrombus right. formation. This has also been discussed in nickel uh, stents uh, some time ago. So what's the your uh, take-home message and what's the next step? We found that inflammatory cells um, are involved in the thrombus formation and that probably um, with the uh, detection of neutrophil extracellular traps, inflammatory cells may be um, new targets for therapeutic um, um, help for patients. And the next steps will be that we have already um, OCT data mm -hmm. um, from the patients and this will be connected to our histological findings. And the paper now is, uh, should be online in the European Heart Journal and for those who want to read it, uh, please go to the platform of our journal.
Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.